So, you're pretty confident about making beats. I mean, you can make melodies, drum patterns are super easy, and mixing your beat is also a piece of cake. It's all good, but sometimes you still feel like your beats suck. You just can't figure out what you're doing wrong, and you're stuck in this endless loop. Well, you might be looking at the wrong place. Let's zoom out a little and figure out the problem. It's very possible that the issue lays at the very beginning of your work. Sound selection. That is where a lot goes wrong. And today I'll show you a few things you need to avoid at all costs. First, look Look at the genre you're making. If you're making trap, for example, then go listen to 20 trap beats from other producers and write down all the elements that stick out to you. In most trap beats nowadays, the drums mean everything. So stop making melodies that take up all the space. Things like extremely complex chord progressions or long lasting chords, bass notes, counter melodies, top melodies, and so on and so on. If you add all of that in one single layer, chances are that the drums are not gonna stand out. You know what? Let me give you an example. Here I have a quick drum pattern. Let's load up a piano and lay down a simple melody. Let's duplicate the root notes to give it some power and look at that. This already takes up a lot of space because the piano uses a lot of the frequency spectrum which means there's less space for other elements. But that doesn't mean you can't use the piano. We can of course adjust the length and position of these notes so that they sound very well together with the drums. Let's shorten the third and the fifth note of the first chord. Now we're still using all the notes, but we're dividing it. You can do the same with the other chords until you have something like this. And now the melody is perfectly usable for a trap beat. Now the piano sounds can interfere with the bass, which sounds terrible. And one solution for that is throwing an EQ on the piano and then cutting away the lows. But there's a huge problem with this. It can actually completely destroy the piano because you're cutting away important frequencies that will give the piano life. Now, of course, this is not always the case. I'm a little bit over exaggerating for the sake of the tutorial. Now, instead of cutting away the low frequencies, find an instrument that sounds full on itself without using the lower frequencies too much. A great example is a bell sound. Find a dry bell sound like this. Then paste your melody on that instrument. You can shorten the notes if you want it to take up less space in the mix. Next, add a reverb to the bell to make it sound spatial. Then with that reverb you can control the amount of space the melody takes up. As long as the lower frequencies are left alone, the melody will sound great with the bass. Now of course you should always cut away the low frequencies of the melody to make space for the bass. But not to the point where the melody loses its life. That's basically what I'm saying here. Choosing the wrong samples is also a killer and I know that this is very difficult. Let me over exaggerate it again. Imagine you have this fire trap melody and you slap some random lo-fi drums on it. That doesn't sound... Wait, it actually sounds pretty good. I'm just messing with you guys, it sounds terrible. If you're making a trap beat, you need those hard and snappy samples, like this. The same thing counts for lo-fi itself. You want to choose dull and low quality drum samples. Imagine throwing hard trap drums on a lo-fi beat. You know, it would kill the purpose. Next, the beats you make are fire, but you're a little worried that the sounds you use are a little bit overused. Let me fix that for you. Take a look at this snare right here. Let me show you a trick that can help you make it sound unique. Find another sound that also sounds snappy and short. Now with the new FL Studio 21 update, you can actually merge samples with crossfades in the playlist. Play around with the shape of the curves until the samples fit together. And then play around with the gain of the sample by dragging the little point up or down. Now you have a unique snare that's ready to use in your beats. And your beats only, because it's unique. Another game changer is downloading melodies from the internet and turning them into MIDI files. That will give you the opportunity to study them and make even better melodies. Now good thing I made a video about that, so yeah, right here. Thank you. 